Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In today's video, we will be going over a quick review of your Swan GANS catheter, also known as your pulmonary artery catheter, your PA cath, or your PAC. But in today's video, I'm gonna to refer to it as a PA cath for the duration of the video. However, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. So you will find a PA cath in an ICU or CCU setting. Some reasons for use would be for your patient that may have just had an intra-aortic balloon pump for pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism, or if your patient is in shock, or a few examples of why it's used. So you wanna monitor their hemodynamic stability so you can better titrate their vasoactive drips and so forth. So let's go into how the line is inserted. So the origin of access is usually through the central neck. Um, it can be the right IJ or it could be subclavian. Rarely ever is it used through the femoral. The only times that I've ever seen it through the femoral line is if the patient was a trauma, so they had limited access and time was crucial. Um, they refer to this line as dirty, so they rarely ever use a femoral line, so you rarely will ever come across this just because of the increased risk of infection and the bloodstream infection. Before the line is placed, they do place an introducer. Once the introducer is placed, then they will be able to guide the line through. So I'm gonna show you some photos of some waveforms of when you know it's in the actual right place. As the line is introduced, there's gonna be a cable that's connected to the Swan-Gans catheter and it's gonna be connected to the monitor. And so as the line approaches the right atrium, you're gonna see very specific waveform versus when it's in the right ventricle versus when it's in the pulmonary artery. So I will show those photos in just a bit. However, let's get into the blood flow of the heart and how that line is guided through. So as the line is introduced through the superior vena cava, it will be in the right atrium. And as we just mentioned on the monitor, you're going to see a very specific waveform. So the A waves indicates atrial contraction and the V waves indicates the right atrial is filling. As it continues to advance, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, you're gonna see a very specific waveform. It's gonna have this like sharp systolic upstroke and a lower diastolic dip. So as it continues to move forward, it's gonna go through the pulmonic valve and then it'll go through into the pulmonary artery. And when it is in the pulmonary artery, you're gonna see on the waveform, it's an actual smoother upstroke. And then you will see this dichrotic notch. So that is um, symbolic of the pulmonic valve closure. So as the balloon for the PA cath is inflated, um, it can't pass any further. The monitor will show this PAOP, like a wedge pressure waveform with two small upright waves. So you'll see the A indicates the left ventricle end diastolic pressure and the V indicates the left atrial filling. So you wanna remember when you're inflating the balloon, it's preventing the perfusion while blocking pressure from that right ventricle. So it's blocking that pressure there. So that is why we want to avoid doing this a lot and we want to deflate the balloon when not in use. So this brings me to the red lumen. So looking at the red lumen here, this gives us the PAWP, so the wedge pressures. This is where we can do all the blood sampling here. Um, so a PAWP is a measurement of the left ventricular end diastolic pressure. So it comes with a three mil syringe and this syringe is specific for this catheter. So you don't wanna just grab any syringe, it's specific for the catheter. So right now I currently have the balloon um, inflated and I have it closed here, but if I wanted to deflate it because it's not to be like that for prolonged periods of time as we just discussed because it um, causes um, decreased perfusion, you wanna deflate it. So when you deflate it, you just bring it back to here 
and then the syringe will go back up to the one and a half. So you could only fill this up to one and a half mils of air. After that, it can't exceed any more of that. So that's the red lumen. And so you would do a series of three readings and you definitely want to follow your hospital protocol guidelines when doing that. So this is the red lumen. Next is your white lumen, this one, or it can be clear. So this one is clear. This is your medication port. So this is where you can access to infuse medications if needed. Um, this is also known as the proximal infusion port and it terminates in the atrium. Um, or sometimes the vena cava. So if I were to inject medication, it would go into the right atrium and through here. So this one is your blue port. You can monitor your CVP or central venous pressure. Um, this is your proximal port. Typically your CVP can range anywhere from two to six. Your provider will um, give you specific parameters that you want to abide by. Um, and then notify the doctor if it is abnormal. So this represents the right ventricular preload and pressure that can be a continuous waveform measurement. Um, you can also um, provide or give additional medication through this port as well. And so this port is actually slightly distal to the white port. The medication will kind of inject into like the right atrium of that origin. So moving on to the yellow port, this monitors your PA pressure. So this is marked your PA distal port. Um, it's color coded yellow. It's for continuous measures of your PAP pressures, which reflects your cardiac um, pressures. So this is the yellow one as well. So your thermistor, this lumen um, actually attaches to a connector cable for cardiac output. You're also able to measure temperature as well. And so this is this connector lumen is white and it's also attached um, with a red port that you can attach um, for cables. So I wanna emphasize the swan markings. So this goes up to 100 centimeters. So this black line indicates um, 10 centimeters. So it's a thin black line. As we move forward, there's two lines there. So that would be 20 centimeters. That would be 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters for the four lines. And then you'll notice here, this is a thick black line. This thick black line indicates 50 centimeters. So as we continue to move forward, there's going to be another thick black line plus the thin line. So 50 plus the thin line is 10 would be 60 and so forth. So then it goes up to 70, 80, 90, and then up to 100. This brings me to the contamination shield. Um, so this is very important when um, the line is placed. It helps keep um, this portion sterile to the patient. So you wanna make sure that it's fully closed and it's locked in. So then that way this um, isn't open to air because that's a risk of infection. So you wanna keep it closed and sterile and connected to the introducer port. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.